Good afternoon and welcome to How to Build Accessible Websites. My name is Melanie Adcock. Um, I'm going to warn you up front, this is going to be like drinking from a fire hose. Um, we have a short amount of time to give you a lot of information. So I, in my slides, I've put in uh, links to webinars, to uh, resources, and I have a link at the end where you can actually go get the slides. So um, kind of a preface to this and why I chose this topic, I'm in the process of building a website uh, for the blind, and this project has been going on since November, uh, and I was hoping it was going to be finished in time for WordCamp, but it's not. We're still testing. Uh, we're, it's a website that provides uh, service dogs for the blind and the low vision. Uh, and I've learned so much in this. I thought I knew a lot before I started this project. I've learned so much more, and I'll share some tips and tricks along the way and some tools as well. There we go. Um, who am I? Uh, I've been doing uh, um, building websites for 20 plus years. I mean, I was back in the days of Go Live. I started using Dreamweaver when it was a version two. Uh, um, I've been using WordPress uh, for eight years, and I'm a former art teacher, so my degree is actually in art. Um, then I went, did a whole 180 and became an IT director. And I know that's like such a leap, but um, I am kind of one of those people that are left brain, right brain equal. So I was an art teacher, but extremely organized and anal retentive. And so I went to actually be a web designer for, for a company. And I was there two weeks and the IT guy left and they're like, well, you, you do web, you don't, you understand computers here, be our network director. And, uh, so I kind of learned all that and got my Microsoft certifications and decided I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. And I missed the art part, and web is the perfect combination of technology and art. So uh, um, I've been freelancing. I've been a uh, presenter at local meetups, uh, both here in Atlanta um, and WordCamps as well. This is my first time speaking about um, accessibility. Okay, you, what, you, what is web accessibility? It is like the hot topic right now. You'll always hear about accessibility this and accessibility like It's the mobile responsive of this time period in web design. You, if you were around eight years ago when mobile responsive was just starting to hit, um, I actually, the first mobile responsive website I built, the uh, client asked me to turn that feature off um, because they didn't like how it looked. Um, and now you, we need to remove the barriers from websites that we build so they're accessible to everybody. 20% of the population has some type of disability. I'm not talking about just vision impaired, but people who can't use a mouse, people who can only use a single keyboard navigation. So we need to build websites that are accessible for everybody. And that's what I've just talked about. Um, if, you, if you exclude that 20% of the people from your website, they're gonna go find that product, they're gonna find that information somewhere else. So it behooves you to build for everybody, be inclusive. Um, start now, be ahead of the curve, because right now it's just becoming an issue, but two or three years from now, it's going to be expected, and you're going to be ahead of everybody else who's not doing that. Besides, it's the right thing to do. Uh, Standards. The web access, this is kind of wordy, so web accessibility standards. Uh, the current standards, WCAG um, is 2.0, and this is going to make sense when I show you the, how to test your website. Um, and there's basically good, better, and best. You get an A, a double A, or triple A. The current standard is have your website be a double A. Um, I've only ever seen like one or two pages that are like triple A, so strive for double A. Um, and right now, 2.0 is the standard. And what are the legal demands? Right now, the only legal demands on web accessibility are people who receive federal funding, such as higher education. 
uh, Section 508. They are required by law to be web accessible. Now, um, there's a lot of talk about adding websites to the American with Disabilities Act, requiring all websites to be accessible. You've heard about the lawsuits, okay? I'm only going to speak about the top one on Winn-Dixie, and uh, they're like, well, they're not a university. Why should they have to be web accessible? Well, it happened to be that their rewards program and their little fob was tied to being able to interact with their website. If you couldn't interact with their website, you were denied the ability to have that discount and those rewards. So that's why they lost that lawsuit and had to pay the money. Okay, how do you get started? You're doing the right thing. Start, start watching webinars, start looking at YouTube videos, start reading about how to build accessible websites. Um, you understand uh, the standards. You use good markup. You're using WordPress, so you're, you're ahead of the curve there. Learn about ARIA. That's um, accessibility. I'm drawing, drawing a blank now. <laughs> uh, I'm drawing a total blank on this, and I use it. I just use ARIA all the time, okay? Uh, themes and plugins. Um, check accessibility throughout the project. That's why my project that's been going on with November, since November is I did not design the site. I'm only building it. I'm doing it through an agency in Louisville. And I did not design the site. Um, a graphic designer who apparently did not read anything about accessibility um, designed the site. So I, I first have to build the part that they did, and then I make all my recommendations on how to fix everything. So uh, it's been slow glowing. Plus, every time we build a section, we have um, both blind uh, users use it and low visibility users, and then we go in and tweak it yet again. So it's a little slow in getting the, um, the feedback from everybody that's involved to make sure we've got this section down before we go to the next one. And we're going to test with tools, and I'm going to show you some great tools for that. Uh, barriers, things that you probably don't think about. Um, Non-text content, such as images, videos, that don't have a text equivalent. If you put a video up there, do you have uh, the script, the actual, um, or do you have closed captioning? Or do you have a transcript of the video or audio so somebody who can't hear can actually read it? Um, can they access all your content by hitting the tab or the arrow keys on, on their keyboard? Um, are the action items, the call to action items, um, defined with purpose? Or are they just common, like, Click here, read more, read more what? Click here to do what, okay? Inability uh, um, to visually determine if an elephant has focus. Um, when you, if you tab through your keyboard, next time you open your computer, just go to a web page and start hitting the tab key, and there should be a faint outline on everything that has a focus on it. The browser does that. Um, some themes turn that off, so make sure um, that when you tab, it shows focus. And there's actually a plug-in for that if it doesn't. So um, uh, using color only to convey information. Got a lot of colorblind people out there. 8% um, of men are colorblind. 1.5% women are colorblind. Generally, it's the red-green colorblind, but there's some blue-orange as well. So if you have a color chart on your website... To, to display data, if it's in black and white, or if they're colorblind, can they tell the difference of what it is? And there's actually something for you can test with that as well. Do you have skip links? Can they skip the navigation? If they start going through your inside pages, are you going to make them tab through every button on your navigation menu every time, or do you have a skip links so they can skip straight to the content? Design. There's an excellent um, WordPress TV session on design and accessibility. I recommend that you go uh, watch this. This is not going to be just you know, completely on design, but I'm going to touch on some of the things. Since we build websites, we handle this uh, type of information. Okay, again, use good, meaningful HTML. We, WordPress does that for us, but if you're writing hand coding stuff, make sure it's good semantic markup. 
color contrast and design. Uh, this is becoming actually a lot of issues for even just older people. Uh, make sure you can actually see the text on the color background that you put it on. Uh, make sure there's enough contrast that it makes it easy to read. Font size, scalable font size. Don't use teeny tiny fonts. Uh, keep in mind that older people need bigger fonts and you need to have it scale it, scalable. So if they hit that zoom on their browser, and scales up, it, your font will scale up. Um, again, meaningful links. Not click here, read more, continue reading. Um, meaningful headings. This is the hierarchy of your web page. And I say I am guilty of this one. Um, H1, H2, and H3. It should be like an outline. Like you're writing a paper and you have an outline. You have one H1, you have your H2s, the H3s fall under the H twos, the H4s fall under the H3s. You don't go H1, H4, H3, H2. You actually have a hierarchy. You don't use headings just to make text bigger. Um, alt tags and descriptions for images, you should be doing that anyway for SEO. This just add, is an added bonus. You're also doing it for accessibility. And please stop using mega menus. It is not good for the visually impaired to have to deal with mega menus. Um, color contrast. Black text on white background, majority of web pages that we go to, are not always the easiest read for the low vision or even for the dyslexic. Um, dyslexic people find it easier to read on colored backgrounds. Some of them it's purple, some of it's orange, some of it's green with colored text on top of that. So keep in mind that uh, um, color does make a difference. And you can test color contrast. Uh, and white text on light background. This is a pet peeve of mine. I have one graphic designer I work with, with one company. Her favorite color combination is white text on extremely light blue backgrounds. <laughs> and every time she does this, I say, this isn't going to pass. And Yes, she does it at, like at least every other month I get a piece that's like that and then I have to send it in. The, they, the actual client who she works for rejects it, can't read it, um, do it over. So, uh, but she keeps trying to sneak it by. Um, and she just must really, really like it. And uh, colorblind users, you may not, may not be able to see the, the colored links in the body copy. Remember all those times, the first thing you learn in CSS is how to get rid of that underline on links? Put it back, okay? <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need it in the menu, but, you, but the people who are colorblind need it in the body copy. So if, if you have blue links and they're blue, orange, colorblind, it looks the same as the text. They can't differentiate uh, the color of links versus the color of text. Um, don't put lots of text on top of a busy background image. I know parallax is really big right now, but um, darken those images so it makes it easier to read. Otherwise, you're never going to pass any of the color contrast tests. Fonts. I love fonts. Um, you know, the clients, we all have them that want every page to look like a ransom note. You know, they want like 15 different fonts on there. Uh, but choose fonts wisely, and sometimes I know you're stuck with what they have in their branding. Uh, but, for instance, this project I'm working now for the Guide Dog website, the graphic designer chose a tall, thin, ultra-thin font for the menus. I took one look at it and said, we can't use this font. And you can't see it. I mean, I'm, I'm like legally blind without my glasses. Even with my glasses on, I was having trouble seeing it. So I had the base font for the menu had to be like 30. That's how um, tall and skinny it was. Well, they, I, I went ahead and built it their way and then said, okay, this is how I would do it. And we actually changed the font. Um, we ended up having to make it, our low vision people are now telling us we really actually need to make it a heavier weight because they're actually having trouble seeing it. Um, so we're gonna actually, before we make it a heavier weight, adjust the color contrast a little bit more. Um, make fonts that are easily scalable. You've all done that where you can zoom into a web page, the command plus on the Mac, command minus. 
Does it break your design when the fonts get really, really large? If you use M's instead of pixels, it will scale with the zoom very easily. Okay, test your pagers, pages again using that zoom factor. Um, or use a text scaling uh, plugin. There's the little plugins that you can put. You see them on websites in the top right corner with the little, little A, medium size A, large A. There are plugins that allow you to resize text. And one, um, one is built into the accessibility plugin. Uh, headings, again, again, do a hierarchy thing. I already talked about that. Um, do not skip. Let your style sheet do the rest. Uh, um, screen readers don't understand when you skip. They think there's content missing. If you don't do that hierarchy, and I'm like probably one of the most guilty people about doing that. So, um, meaningful links. Um, screen readers. Unfortunately, there's lots of screen readers out there. Your phone has it built into it. Your tablet has it built into it. Some people download free ones off the internet. Some people pay lots of money for them to read the web pages to them. Unfortunately, there's no set standard on what they support. So if you go and look at a grid of what every screen reader supports, they're all over the place. So keep it simple. Um, for instance, bulleted lists. Some screen readers only support plain old bulleted lists. So if you're using these fancy icons um, for a bulleted list, it may not be supported in a screen reader. Uh, so I said use many meaningful links. Links. I said to click here to read about Leader Dog versus click here. Um, learn more about Leader Dog. Read about us. That's a project I'm actually working on is uh, for Leader Dog and. Uh, I actually did a little ebook for, for the actual staff because they're going to be actually putting in some of the content. And I'm like, okay, here's the rules you have to follow. So I actually made a rule book for them. So when you go in and put your department's information in, you have to follow all these rules. It talked about alt tags, did videos, Vimeo videos for each section. And this is how you are going to do it. And then we'll go back in and check and see how they do and grade them. Um, Images, always alt tags, descriptions. Can't say that enough. Good for SEO, good for accessibility. Menus, no mega menus. Um, now here's a big one. I'm going to show you a, a sample. You must be able to access submenus by just hitting the keyboard. Now I had a, I started this project building a theme. I actually went and looked. It said it was 100% accessible. I built the whole header and footer out. Um, went to test it, and it did tab through the submenus, but it did not key the submenu to go down. The screen readers would work fine on it, but the, it was not triggering the submenu. So I believe the developer, when they said it was 100% accessible, I actually contacted them and said, this doesn't work. And apparently something broke in the latest version, so they're aware of it, they're changing it. I could not wait, so I actually went to another theme. I spent the weekend rebuilding it um, in something I knew that would work. Um, there is a special class called screenreadertext.screen-reader.text in WordPress. You can put content specifically for, speak, for screen readers. For instance, you have a header right menu. You, don't wanna, you normally don't usually put a home button in there because you don't really have the real estate usually for that, but you can use that text and the CSS code that goes along with it to add a home button for screen readers. And I've used it to add specific sections on things that are not accessible to build a section out that's just for screen readers. And I put a, um, a bit.ly link there that will take you to a page that explains this CSS um, and this class the best and the best uses for it. It's too hard to explain it in a very short period of time. Um, themes, check your themes out. There's some good accessible themes on the repo, uh, but you gotta test them. Just because they say it's accessible, it may not be. Genesis, and when I talk about Genesis, I'm talking about the ones that are um, on Studio Press. If you've got a third party theme, test it. Test it, test it, test it. So. Um, generate press. I used Genesis for years, and we're talking like six, seven years. I just started using Generate Press, 
And I am totally impressed by its accessibility. I mean, it is awesome, especially on the menus. And uh, um, again, don't take their word for it. Read, I read documentation, but test. And uh, let's go on. Uh, plugins. Make sure your plugins support accessibility. Form plugins. There's actually an add-on in the, in the WordPress repository for Gravity Forms to make them more accessible. Just a little free add-on to Gravity Forms. Uh, page builders. Not all modules and page builders are accessible. Usually the accordions and the tabs and things like that are, but not all. Again, test. Um, install the WordPress accessibility plugin. That's probably the best one in the repository. Um, there's a new one out there for testing called W Alley, um, or we call it Wally. It's W A 1 1 Y. Uh, and it's great for testing. I'm going to show you an example of that. And read the documentation that comes with I know we're all just install and go. We, we download the plugin, we install it, we go, you know, oh, it doesn't work. Who reads the direction? Well, I'm, I'm a direction reader, so I actually go in and actually read the doc documentation before I contact support. Um, but I test, test, test. Um, here's some tools. Take a screenshot of this or download the slides. A contrastchecker.com. You can put two color, your two main colors in for your website and see if they pass, if they pass with a double A or better. Um, Sim Daltonism is a Mac app and there, um, that you can get off the app store that you can put your images in and or your web page in and see what it looks like for the colorblind. So you can actually see if it, they're red, green colorblind, what it looks like, if they're blue, orange colorblind, what it looks like. Um, the Axe by Danique Labs, it's a browser add-on for Chrome. It allows you to put accessibility testing right in your browser. Uh, Wave, um, it's actually my favorite one, uh, wave.webaim.org. Um, you put the web address in and it will actually score it. You gotta take it with a grain of salt and actually read it because sometimes they pick up things that aren't really there. Um, the W Alley program, the Wally plugin, um, it brings in Wave um, and the other tools into your website. So you can actually click on a little icon and it will grade your page right there as you're building it. Uh, third party services like Site Improve, Tenon, Danique can do it for you if you just want to throw money at the problem, um, a lot of money at the problem, because <laughs> uh, they're quite expensive. Uh, if you're a big corporate agency, this might be the best thing if you have different people um, managing different departments and you can't basically too big of a website to keep track of, then this third-party service can actually keep track and make sure all your pages are accessible. Um, use your phone to test. Turn on the accessibility features. Now, as a formal Apple tech support person, remember how you turned on those accessibility features so you know how to turn them off? <laughs> because I've gotten a lot of people who called who, who can't even get through their uh, passcode because they turned on accessibility. So remember how you do it? Download a screen reader and test your websites with a screen reader. The more expensive ensues have like a 30-day or 15-day free trial, um, but there's free ones out there. Download a couple different ones because they all support a uh, different markup. Um, WordPress TV, just do accessibility. There's some great talks on WordPress TV. Um, iThemes does free webinars. Training.ithemes.com. They had one on the um, Wally plugin about three weeks ago. It's free. Go watch it. Um, talks about how to use the plugin. I put the link there to the plugin. Um, there's an upcoming accessibility summit on iThemes next month. I think it's about three weeks. Um, I think it's $67, uh, but it's like a whole day um, thing on accessibility. And uh, Search for webinars. WP Engine did one two weeks ago that was excellent on accessibility. Um, go to the WordPress.org uh, website and read what they have. They, they actually have a blog about, about how they're making WordPress more accessible. Okay, I'm going to show you. Let me escape this. And I wasn't expecting to have to hold the microphone at the same time. So uh, I'm going to kind of work my way through. Um, here's the contrast checker website, you just put in your, your color, 
your foreground color, your background color, Let's just pick one here. And it, it see, it passes the double A, but not the triple A. And uh, it gives you tests. I, pref I don't usually use this one. I use the one that's in the wave because it puts everything together into one, one tool. Um, here is generate press theme. And I'm going to use the tab button. See the skip links come up in the upper left-hand corner. It allows me to skip to the content. But when I go through the menus, when I hit a drop-down menu, I can tab through the sub without using a mouse. And notice there's a border around that. That was the focus I was talking about. It shows the focus. This is straight out, no extra thing. I just, uh, this is the actual demo on Generate Press. This is what you get when you install it. And this plug, this uh, theme is free. Their um, premium version, I think, is $39 for unlimited sites. So um, definitely a great theme for a cheap price. But it goes, all their ones go straight through. Just that menu alone is definitely worth it. Uh, the next one, um, Gravity Forms, is the WCAG 2.0 form fields. It adds accessibility to the form fields. And there's a lot of things it does. I'm not going to list everything because there's like 12 different things. Uh, that it does for Gravity Forms. Um, the WP Accessibility Plugins, most popular one, it's the, I'll show you what it does here in a minute, and all the, and they've added a lot of new features in the last year. Um, it does even more than it did before. The uh, WALI, the WA11Y Accessibility Toolbox, um, it allows you to test your pages as you build them. That's the one I'm using now. Here's the WAVE website. So since we're at... Um, Let's do a bad one first. Uh, ESPN.com. Let's let it generate all the errors after it loads everything. And it's still loading, and it's still loading. They should go to the session on a quickly loading website. And it's... The last time I checked, it was like 289 errors on the home page alone. Oh, here, 254, they got better. Um, and 36 alerts, um, and then it talks about the structured elements, and you can actually walk yourself through each one of these. We can see that it will mark every error on there with a little red flag. Yeah. 254 red flags on the home page alone. Um, uh, contrast, you, here's, let me get over there. There we go, contrast. It, you can go 227 contrast errors on ESPN. Okay, let's do one that's actually good now. Um, FIU.edu. Look how fast it loaded. They have, um, get back up here. They only have two errors and only one alert. That's an excellent, excellent. And you can actually get, click through here, hit the styles. It will actually tell you each one, what each one is. You click on that, it takes you to the corresponding one on the web page, and you can read it. Again, you have to kind of look, because sometimes it just doesn't uh, tell you. Now, I'm going to quickly go through here. Uh, the wave we just did, uh, the WP Accessibility plugin, I've got it set up in here, and I only have one more minute. Um, so what it does is allow you to enable skip links. It allows you to do all these little things you can turn on and turn off, depending on who your audience is. Um, some things we've found out that we had to turn off on here because the theme handled it. So you have to just turn things on, test, and test. And I want to show you really quickly what way the way Wally tool looks like on the front. See the little pair of sunglasses down here in the lower left-hand corner? When you click on that, 
you can actually test, are all the headings correct? What's the contrast? Is the link te text meaningful? Do you have labels on your forms? Do you have alt text, image alt text on all your images? It will actually sit there and give you a report on each one for each page. So I, it's a great one to put in there, but I just still go to the web wave test and test each individual page. So now that we're done drinking from the fire hose, um, let me put my uh, presentation back up so you can get my contact information. Let's see. And if you have, does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, the admin, the W, there's, I think there's a, actually a plugin for the admin. It's pretty good at being accessible, but uh, there is a plugin I know to make the admin even more accessible. Anybody else? Yes, sir. That would be the last question. I've heard of it, but I haven't used it. Yeah, I've had that with the parallax where it shows as an error when it's really not. Um, so I, I just actually, actually ask a visually impaired person to test it. Um, I don't worry so much about the screen readers, but it's actually it's harder for the low vision people than it is for the screen readers. Um, I got them through the project I'm working on. Um, and now that I have their information, I'm actually going to use them <laughs> to help me in the future. Yeah. I'll be in the happiest bar after this, so if you want to um, contact me, um, I'm, I'm at MGA Creative on Twitter, um, and my slides are mgacreativedesigns.com forward slash accessibility, and that will take you to my slides. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the work camp.